One farmer says, seems to me there was a tea party in Boston that was illegal too. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold. We shall seek to establish and maintain a dollar which will not change its purchasing and debt-paying power during the succeeding generation. As anguished shrieks rose up from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Government credit and government currency are really one and the same thing. A reserve of gold and a small reserve of silver. So why do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's a form of reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. You know, some people still think it's money. A happy feel-good story. These are some of my favorites. Welcome back to the Junius Maltby channel. 19th century shipwreck is suddenly turning up gold coins off South Carolina coast. These are the best. The only thing I don't like about these stories is that I'm not there doing it. I just can't imagine the feeling of being there and handling gold from, you know, American history. And we'll get into the history behind some of these coins because it is interesting. A 180-year-old shipwreck popular with scuba divers. I was reading about this, and it sounds like people have been going to the site for years. Why no one found gold? Beyond me. But I would be kicking myself if I had dove there in the past and not found any. Well, it's been popular with scuba divers. It's proving to be a trove of rare coins and artifacts for a salvage project launched 20 miles off the South Carolina coast. Known to divers as the Copper Pot, the wreck is actually the steamship North Carolina, which collided with another boat in 1840 with hundreds of gold coins stuffed in passengers' steamer trunks. Hello, Ancat. Yes, they found gold. They found gold coins. Yes. Okay. Bye. Jump away. Makes you wonder who these passengers were, because anyone who was carrying, you know, suitcases full of gold coins was extremely wealthy back at that time period. The first of the newly found coins, several $5 gold pieces dating from the mid-1830s were brought up in late September, along with 19th century dinnerware and marble, according to Blue Water Ventures International, based in Florida. I can't believe what we're finding, Keith Webb, president of Blue Water Ventures, told McClatchy News Group. The coins look almost as if they were just minted, and it's blowing our minds. It's because they were hidden by a large piece of copper and were not moved around in the sand by the current. Blue Water Ventures and its partner, Endurance Exploration Group, issued a report that contends the aggregate loss in money was large when the ship went down and would today be valued in the tens of millions of dollars, mostly in gold coins. This includes one passenger who claimed he lost $15,000 in the incident. Let's quickly calculate how many that would be if it was just in $10 and $20 coins. Well, regardless of what denomination, at approximately $20 per ounce, we know it was twenty sixty-seven, but we'll go with 20 for the sake of easy math, this is roughly 750 ounces of gold this one individual lost. Webb's research suggests these won't be the usual gold coins found on 19th century shipwrecks. Many of the passengers were likely carrying coins from the newly commissioned U.S. Mint in Dahlonega, Georgia, which operated only 24 years. Coins from the Dahlonega Mint are rare and coveted by collectors and historians. Regardless of denomination, any high-grade Dahlonega gold coin with a good strike is a real treasure and based on past history has been a blue-chip coin investment, according to the DahlonegaGold.com. The SS North Carolina was previously searched for treasure by an outfit called Merrix, which salvaged $700,000 worth of gold coins in the late 90s. Merrix ceased working the site in part because the coins were difficult to salvage. Along with coins, he is hoping to find silverware and antique watches that may be preserved to the point of repair. Recovery efforts will continue, weather permitting, into November, he says. The sinking of the steamship North Carolina is one of the stranger shipwreck tales off the Carolinas in the 19th century. It went down 60 miles south of Wilmington, near Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, early on July 25, 1840, after colliding with a sister ship, the Governor Dudley, 
the North Carolina Shipwrecks.blogspot's reports, the Dudley hit the North Carolina amidships between the ladies' and gentlemen's cabins, almost cutting the ship in half, the blog site says. Within 10 minutes, the North Carolina settled to her decks and soon disappeared. The site reports all passengers and crew were hurriedly put on the Dudley and most had no time to gather belongings in the havoc, according to a report by Blue Water Ventures. Webb's research indicates the steamer trunks might have been located in the same part of the ship as loads of mail. The ship is believed to have gone straight down in shallow water and has a large debris field. If my memory serves me correctly, one of the reasons coins from this time period are specifically rare is because the United States was exporting many of its gold coins in the payments of debts to Europe at this time period. In the 1830s, 1840s, a lot of those gold coins went overseas and were either and melted and restruck. So that is why many of them actually disappeared from circulation and are rare. There's a really good article on that, the disappearance of gold coins from that time period. And believe me, I read it probably 10 years ago. And that's the only piece of information from what I do remember is the exportation of gold. And it was a lengthy, more scholarly piece on a lot of the economic situations that were taking place during the early years of the Republic, where we had to pay many a debts back to Europe. And therefore, much of our gold was ending up overseas and being restruck. And therefore, these coins are more rare because of that. All right, thanks for tuning in to the Junius Malpe channel. Stop by next time. Don't forget to like, to share, subscribe, and check out the links down below for uh, some nice boring coffee mugs, boring shirts and sweatshirts that are representative of the most boring channel on YouTube. Have a good night.